welcome to another one of my historical videos looking at past monarchs of England and later Great Britain. Kings and queens down the ages. And today's video is the ninth in my series. And this one will be looking at, let's just get the uh, focus. King Canute, otherwise known as, or spelt, I should say, Canute. But uh, this is the way that uh, is the normal way to spell it. Now, Canute was born in nine, about 995 AD. And he was the son of Swain, Borkbeard, who I covered in a previous video because he was also King of England. Canute was uh, basically a Danish Viking. But this was a period when the Danes actually managed to Uh, reign in England for a while and there were in total uh, four kings, Danish kings of England before the Anglo-Saxons uh, regained control again. Now he ascended the throne on the 30th of November 1016. And that was the date that his uh, rival, featured in my last video, um, Edmund Ironside, died. Edmund Ironside and the Anglo-Saxon Edmund and Canute, the Dane, had been sharing England. They had fought themselves to a standstill. And um, they agreed that Canute uh, should have the north of England and Edmund the south. But uh, literally only a few weeks after that agreement uh, was met, Edmund died. There is suspicion, or there was suspicion, of uh, foul play. But it's not, uh, it's not been proven exactly how he died. Maybe he accidentally cut his own head off while shaving or something. That's a little joke from Blackadder there. Uh, but anyway, Canute took over and uh, he became King of England. But later, in 1019, he also became King of Denmark. And in 1028, King of Norway. Having beaten off uh, other applicants, basically. When he became king, um, he was a bit ruthless at first. Uh, kings often are when they first start out as are queens as well, but at this stage there had been no queens in England. Um, well, there had been queens, but not um, ruling monarchs, not queens that were ruling monarchs. 
and um, they always had to be ruthless to assert their authority. And so a lot of uh, Saxon uh, noblemen were either executed or exiled if it was thought that they were loyal to the Anglo-Saxon line. Because as I mentioned in my last video, Edmund had sent his two sons abroad. So uh, there could have still been support in England for Edmund's line. Edmund having been the son of Ethelred, King Ethelred. So Canute wanted to snuff out any thoughts of uh, an Anglo-Saxon revival. He also exiled Thorkel the Tall. Now, that Viking, you might have remembered from a previous video, he uh, would often change sides quite a bit. Um, I think it was Edmund he fought for, having changed sides to the Anglo-Saxons, and then he changed sides back again. But he kept chopping backwards and forwards, and so in the end, Canute just uh, got rid of him. Not down a big hole, um, he just exiled him, probably back to uh, back to Denmark, I should think. Canute was considered a good and wise uh, and strong king. And the Viking raids uh, that had been uh, terrorising England for so long uh, became less because, of course, Canute was himself a Viking. So um, a lot of those raids in the past had been instigated by him himself. So um, he was able to stem the tide and protect England. Um, which a lot of people were happy about, so he got a lot of support from the English uh, because of that. The English forgetting that uh, um, basically he was one big Viking raid himself. But uh, anyway. Now in 1017, he married... Emma of Normandy, quite a strong, powerful woman of the time. She had been the, uh, or well, she was the widow of Ethelred, who was the father of um, Edmund Ironside. So basically he married uh, the mother of his, uh, of his rival, uh, Edmund. And Emma of Normandy was the um, daughter of Richard I. Richard I um, he was the Duke of um, Normandy. So she was um, of noble blood. Um, and uh, she was actually the great aunt oh, I didn't spell that very well of none other than William the Conqueror. And uh, that's part of the reason why William later, as uh, you'll find out in a future episode, uh, part of the reason why William, how William justified his invasion of England. Because he was the, Emma was his great aunt, basically. And Emma was the mother 
of the king that had just died in Ethan, in uh, England, when uh, William wanted to uh, invade. Anyway, I digress a little bit. So um, Canute married Emma of Normandy in 1017. As I say, Canute was seen as a wise and good king. However, part of that uh, is down to the fact that he treated the church very well. And the church, well, they were the ones that wrote all the, uh, they were the chroniclers, basically. They were the ones that wrote the history and the opinions of the time. And they were the people that wrote everything down. So if you treat them very well, they're going to paint a good picture of you in history. Of course, the thing that most people remember about Canute is um, holding back the tide. Some people think that this was Canute attempting to hold back the tide. Um, but what it was, was Canute, I mean, this probably didn't happen, but it's um, supposedly Canute showing how human he was. Uh, he was basically saying to his um, uh, sycophants, um, his counsellors that thought he was great, anyone around him that was, that was um, deifying him, making him out to be some kind of god, he said, look, I'll prove to you I'm not a god. And he stood on the beach and said, Tide, don't come in. And the tide still came in. So he said, there you go. That proves I'm not a god. I'm a human being. I very much doubt that happened. Um, but uh, for some reason, that's um, a story that is supposed to make him look very humble. He had two sons. And they were Harold Harefoot, sometimes listed as Harold the First, but it was really the Normans that, that put numbers after their names. Uh, the Danes. Uh, the Vikings and um, Anglo-Saxons tend to, tended to have nicknames after their names. So he was Harold Harefoot. I I did know the reason why he was called for Harefoot, but I can't remember now. But I think it's something to do with... I don't think it's as simple as having a hairy foot. <laughs> but I think it is uh, related uh, to his feet in some way. And the other one was... Arthur Canute. Now the problem here was that Harold Harefoot was from his um, first wife. Elf Gifu, sometimes given other names. And Arthur Canute was from Emma of Normandy. Half brothers. And they did not get on. At all. Harold was slightly older than Hartha Canute. But they were fierce enemies, as were the mothers, Elf Gifu, trying to get Harold on the throne, Emma trying to get Hartha Canute on the phone on the throne. In fact, Emma seemed to favour Hartha Canute more than her own kids. She had had a number of kids with Ethelred, listed in a previous video. Two of them were still surviving. Edward, who would later be Edward the Confessor, King Edward the Confessor, and um, his brother Alfred. Edward and Alfred were in Normandy being looked after. They're in exile, basically. But she favoured her new son over them, her new son, Hartha Canute. Because, of course, Emma had been married, queen consort of two kings, the Anglo-Saxon king Ethelred and the Danish king 
uh, Canute. Very complicated life she had. Now, Canute died on the 12th of November, 1035, having been on the throne for some 19 years. He was buried in the Old Minster Winchester. But during the English Civil War, uh, which ran from um, 1642 to 1649, I think that's the exact date, 1642 to 1649, some roundhead parliamentary soldiers um, ransacked the old minster and they scattered um, bones about the place and Canute's grave was one of those that they raided and they, they scattered his bones around and um, his bones got mixed up with other bones from other graves in the old minster. Most notably, the bones of William Rufus, King William II. He was the son of William the Conqueror, King of England from uh, William Rufus. Uh, when did he take over? 1087, I think. Yeah, William Rufus, I think, became king in 1087. Didn't reign for very long. But anyway, his bones got mixed up with Canute's. Um, they were later tidied up and put back in their boxes. Uh, but um, I suspect to this day, there's probably, you know, William Rufus is down there with probably three legs and um, Canute with one leg. You know, I wouldn't be surprised. All the bones got uh, mixed up. And uh, obviously in the 1600s, they're not going to be able to really tell them apart. So Canute and William Rufus are joined, joined together uh, forevermore. Now, in my next video, I'll be covering Harold Harefoot. He um, is a bit complicated, but when uh, Canute died, um, the throne I think mainly due to Emma's influence as the current queen sort of thing, the latest of his wives, um, Emma pushed for the younger Arthur Canute to be king. So he was made king of Denmark and was technically king of England, but never went to England. He just stayed in Denmark. So he allowed his brother, Harold Harefoot, to act as regent. So he ruled England on behalf of his brother, Arthur Canute. But um, he wasn't actually crowned king of England. But neither was Arthur Canute at that actual time. So for a period of a couple of years, there was no sort of official king of England. It's all a little bit messy. Anyway, that'll be covered in uh, my next videos, these two these two kings will be in my next two videos. So there you go, Canute. Married to uh, Elf Gifu and Emma of Normandy and resting for all time with his new mate, William Rufus, King William II. Um, if you'd like to subscribe, please do so. And I will see you on the next video. Thank you very much for watching and for listening.